Hello, working people of Southwest Washington. And happy holidays. You're listening to episode 12 of Working to Live in Southwest Washington, produced by the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council. We're also a proud member of the Labor Radio Podcast Network. Find out more about the network at laborradionetwork.org. I'm Shannon Myers. And I'm Harold Phillips. And before we get started, we always want to remind you that the views and opinions expressed on the show are not necessarily the views and opinions of the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council, its affiliates unions, our guests unions, or their employers, and not even the elves. You're going to bring the elves into this, the working people's voices, the elves on the line. Isn't that just like labor? It is the holidays. They have their own opinion. Well, now that we've got that out of the way. So, Shannon, it is officially December. Are you even close to ready for the holidays? Actually, I am done with the holidays. What? All I have left is my holiday baking. So I'm actually really prepared. The reason I did that is because I know shopping's going to be crazy, safety to get those gifts. So I wanted to plan ahead. So yeah, I am ready. You know, there are a lot of people in our community who don't really have the resources to be ready now or Anytime in the future. So that brought up this whole Giving Tuesday that happened this last week. I was never really familiar with Giving Tuesday. And I think the reason I really wasn't familiar is because I'm a part of the labor movement. And the labor movement, we give every day. We are always trying to find a way to help better the lives of our members and our community. And we're going to talk about a bunch of ways that the labor movement not only gives back during the holiday season, but how we take care of our members and our communities every single day. You know, that's a really good point. Labor is always there for working people. And it's something that I think a lot of people in our community aren't aware of. But with the holidays being so tough this year, what with COVID and unemployment, a lot of people want to help. And they may not know exactly how to help displaced workers. So we're going to introduce you to some of the people in labor who are offering a helping hand this holiday season and let you know how you can work with them to make the holidays a little bit brighter for families in need. First, let's talk to Micah Dubay, a representative with the International Longshore and Warehouse Workers Union Local 5. Thanks for joining us, Micah. Thank you for having me. Now, Micah, when people think about ILWU, they think about longshoremen, right? They think about people who work on the docks, but ILWU actually represents a lot of workers. Yeah, we're so much more expansive than just longshore, but longshore is a major part of our history. So that's what gets associated with the ILWU. But we have the warehouse division, and that's where Powell's Books falls into. Yeah, Powell's employees have had a really hard time this year. They have. Back in March, we had about 400 workers laid off out of 410 uh, approximately. About one third have been rehired since March, but we still have two thirds out on layoffs. And we're reaching the extension deadline now too of unemployment benefits in Oregon here. Well, not just Oregon, but nationally, there's a big question as to whether unemployment is going to be extended. A lot of people, they hear that term layoff and they just assume someone is fired. But is that necessarily the case for these workers? No. So at Powell's in our contract, we do have what is called recall. So if you are laid off after you have become a regular worker at Powell's, you have recall benefits that lasts pretty much until you get recalled by the company back to a job. But it could be anywhere from a period of a couple months, a couple weeks to probably in this pandemic over a year. We're definitely looking at over a year for a majority of our workers. And the unfortunate side effect of that is that while people know they have a job at some point in the future. It's very unknown because of how the pandemic is affecting us. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. How is the pandemic affecting you? Ooh, well, <laughs> in a variety of ways. Uh, one, our local, we've had to change how we run things. So we run all online meetings now. That's actually been a fairly easy transition for us. 
We did have to get rid of our hall since our PALS workers were laid off. We do have other units, but they're all smaller. Like we also represent the Oregon Historical Society. Um, we represent the Columbia River Veterinary Services Pet Hospital up in Vancouver, Washington, first union pet hospital in the nation. And we also represent some Aramark Food Service workers up at the Evergreen State College in Olympia. There's a union vet in Vancouver, and I did not know about it. I am switching. <laughs> yeah, there's a union vet in Vancouver. They just won their contract. It was ratified uh, end of August, beginning of September. I love that it. That is so great. So, Micah, these people at Powell's have been laid off for nine months, a year yes. in some cases, like you're talking about. How are they getting by? Right now, they've been getting by on unemployment, but we also very quickly set up what we called a COVID-19 worker relief fund where people can just donate to us. But we've also set it up so that if you go to pals.com through our partner link, 7.5% of all purchases will go towards our COVID-19 worker relief fund for all of our laid off workers. And that is overseen by our board of trustees. So any member can apply. So you get to shop local and you're going to support families who really need it. That's amazing. We need to spread the word. How do people find this? You say there's a link. Where can they find that link? So that link is on our website. It is ilwulocal5.com slash support. And there's a big old PALS button right on there. And doing that, you shop union, you shop local, and you're helping PALS stay in business, which ultimately helps the workers. And it's also a good way to directly help our workers now. So going into the new year, what are these workers looking at at PALS for 2021? Um, a lot of them are looking at uncertainty. Quite a few of them are looking at possibly losing unemployment because what is happening is so unknown. Now that it has been over six months, they have also lost some of their seniority benefits that were previously guaranteed to them. So we've got a campaign to try and get that back to get benefits insured during a pandemic, which our contract, uh, Powell's and the union both agreed it wasn't written with a pandemic in mind. That's part of our promoting the Powell's partner link is to get that money funneled towards Powell's, get people shopping local, supporting local businesses, union businesses. A lot of people have had this drilled into their heads over the last 20 years that the labor union and the business are against each other. They're constantly fighting. But in reality, <laughs> the members of the labor union, which are the workers at that business, want that business to be successful because if that business is successful, they still have a job and they have benefits. And the company, they need profits. Everybody has this symbiotic relationship to make sure that we are all successful. And this is a perfect example. We need to support Powell's, our local union bookstore, supporting the business, keeping the business in business keeps people working. And that is what the labor union here is trying to do. Great job. Yeah. Thank you so much for explaining that because I don't think a lot of people realize. Yeah, we have had people actually asking us because they know we have some disagreements with Powell's right now, uh, if they should boycott. And we have said, absolutely not. But that's not what we want. We want our workers back at work, especially right now. So Micah, what's that address for the partner link that our audience can use to shop at Powell's again? ilwulocal5.com slash support. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for spreading the word. Yeah, thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure talking with both of you. Next, we've got Joe Cadwell. He's the president of the Northwest Carpenters Union and he's actually the host of a podcast himself, Grit Northwest. Thanks for joining us, Joe. Well, thanks for having me on your show. So tell us a little bit about Grit Northwest. Where can our audience find it and what's it about? The easiest way to find Grit Northwest is to go to buildnw.org forward slash podcast. You can also find it on Spotify and Apple Podcast and all the usual hosts for your podcast by just searching Grit NW. I started it in early September and I had just come up with the concept after having been reelected to the position of council president. And I realized that my role should probably expand beyond running a monthly e-board meeting and a quarterly delegate meeting. And in a COVID sort of environment that we live in, I wanted to be able to reach out 
and get information to our members. And I thought a podcast would be a great way to do it. I had never done podcasting before. I love podcasts. I enjoy listening to podcasts, but really had no experience. And when I told my wife what I was up to, she just kind of gave me that look and shook her head. And uh, we said, well, we'll see where this goes. And like uh, most things I like to do, I jump in with both feet. And it's been a really fun ride now. I think I've just posted yesterday my 23rd episode. Uh, The listenership is growing every week and every month. It just continues to grow. Wow. Great minds think alike because, you know, we started our podcast probably right around the same time. And our whole concept, again, was this COVID thing. How do we reach our members? How do we reach our community? How do we reach people? So, you know, you're pretty smart, just like Harold and I. I agree. I listened to your show the other day and and got some of your backstory. And that's really cool how you guys came up with the concept for your show as well. And being right across the river from each other. Go figure. So, Joe, you are right across the river from us. Northwest Carpenters doesn't just cover Southwest Washington. It also covers other states as well, right? That is correct. We are a six-state regional council. We cover all of Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and Alaska. We're one of 25 regional councils that belong to the Greater Carpenter Union, known as the UBC. We've been a labor organization since 1881, so we're coming up on 140 years. And we also represent half a million members across the U.S. and Canada. Our particular regional council has 29,000 members representing seven different crafts and approximately 26 different locals. So tell us about this toy drive that you folks are doing. The toy drive is actually in its 22nd year, and it started when my boss, Mike Hawes, who is now the training center director over at the Pacific Northwest Carpenters Institute, was actually working for the regional council at that time, and he was a union rep and came up with the concept. Uh, very humble beginnings. I talked to him about the holiday drive just this morning, and he was impressed at how far it had gone and how much it had grown and the amount of joy and goodwill that it is bringing, not only to our carpenters, children, but to uh, children in the community as well. And we are actively recruiting right now for toys and cash donations for any of the listeners that would like to give to the organization. And within our organization, again, we focus on carpenter families, you know, initially. And then we also reach out into the community with some of our additional toys. And those go to groups such as the Portland Fire Department, Toy and Joy Makers, the Dornbecker Children's Hospital, Toys for Tots, Blazers Albina, Head Start Classroom, and the Labor Community Service Agency. So... Yeah, it's a wonderful thing this time of year to help families that may be struggling financially, especially this year with COVID and the after effects of some of the large fires we had definitely put a hurting on some of our members' ability to provide for themselves and their families. Well, it's amazing that you're spreading the joy even outside of your union to these other organizations. So if people want to donate to the toy drive, how would they do that? There's two ways. The easiest way would be to contact our Portland office at 503-261-1862 if you're listening in Southwest Washington and the Portland area. And if you're up uh, listening a little further up in Kent, we have our main regional council office and their number is 253-945-8803. And when you get hold of someone on the phone, tell them you'd like to donate to the holiday toy drive. The key person in charge of this, Melvin Norman from our Carpenters Union, and his phone number is 971-260-7784. And Melvin is very happy to talk to you to get you the information you need to figure out the best way you can donate to the holiday toy drive. That is fantastic, Joe. I am so glad that you carpenters are putting this on, that you're taking in these donations, and that you're reaching out into the community. One more time, how can they find your podcast again? The easiest way would to just ask Siri or Alexa or Google to play Grit Northwest. I always love that. You can also just Google search Grit Northwest Carpenters Union Podcast, or you can go to buildnw.org forward slash podcast. My episodes are intended to educate, inform, and inspire people to uh, appreciate their unions and to protect what we have as union workers. And they do a great job. Love their union. I love my union. I wish more people would love their union. That's a great idea. I like it. Thanks so much for joining us, Joe. We really appreciate it. 
Thank you and happy holidays. Now let's turn to Karen Byram, executive director of one of the organizations Joe just talked about, Labor's Community Service Agency. LCSA has been helping out working families in need for decades. Isn't that right, Erin? 1974. In 1974, it was a partnership between some great folks at United Way that we're still in partnership with over 46 years later. And the AFL-CIO, those two entities came together and created a safety net organization that can serve union families in a time of need. And 46 years later, we're still going strong here in our LCSA for Oregon and Southwest Washington. And for those of you who don't know that acronym, the AFL-CIO stands for the American Federation of Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizations. And each state actually has a statewide (laughs) AFL-CIO. So, Erin, what does that aid look like in a normal year? How do you help people who are in need? We are a safety net organization and uh, supportive services. So we're proud to help union families with rent, utilities, food, uh, if they're laid off, if they've had a death in the family, if they've had an injury, we jump in and we pay some bills. We partner with all the unions. All unions are welcome to participate. And I work with dozens and dozens of unions with these programs. But we also have supportive service programs. We found out that women and people of color were not getting into the building trades as much as we wanted. And one of the reasons was these amazing organizations called pre-apprenticeship trainings, um, they didn't have child care support. So if you have someone who has kids, she really wants to get into the building trades, but she has kids, she doesn't have to pay for Oregon Trades Women, which is amazing, but there was no support to cover child care while she was in that unpaid two-month training. So we jumped in and created the pre-apprenticeship child care initiative, and we cover child care while folks are in vocational training for the building trades. So supportive services like that that we're pretty proud of. That is amazing. So what does LCSA do for working families during the holidays? One of our largest programs is called Presence from Partners, and I'm hoping some folks out there have heard of it. Uh, I got to do a shout out to the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council, who won the toy drive competition last year. So a lot of woot woots out there for that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Of course they did. You guys are amazing. In a normal year, we have presents for partners in a building and we have about 300 kids come through and we load them up with toys. We get the parents some gift cards for them to buy holiday meal needs later on. Uh, They just really go out of there. Each family that is struggling through layoff or any kind of financial hardship loaded up with love from labor. Last year, we had over 50 unions participate in some form or another, whether it's referring their union families in need, reaching out to their membership and finding out who needs a little help. Whether it's donating, whether it's doing a toy drive, whether it's showing up and volunteering. At all levels, unions get together and provide some holiday solidarity love. And I do want to say that our union credit unions have really stepped up in a big way. We got donations from, of course, the Ironworkers Federal Credit Union, but also the Longshore Local Weight Federal Credit Union. They fundraise all year long with their members. And those Longshore men put dollars in the bucket all year round, and they donate about $15,000 for us to buy toys. So a big shout out to them, along with the IBW Federal Credit Union. Lots of solidarity love to our union credit unions. So obviously, this year is going to be a little bit different, right? Yeah, I need a stiff drink for this one. So uh, <laughs> so I start thinking about presents from partners probably about February, right? After I take January off in recovery, because it's a large event that we do. Over 800 people are in that building. We have 150 volunteers. So this year I started thinking, well, this is going to be interesting. And we won't be able to have so many people in a building. So we'll just stage it out a couple of days. And have one family every 20 minutes come through. And that's a lovely idea. And I'll start moving with that. I called it my plan B. Well, it became very apparent at some point that plan B was not going to happen. And we needed to start thinking about a plan C. So presence from partners turned into a mid-December contactless drive through that we're super excited about. And that is what we are planning right now. I will say at this moment, we are starting to look at the viability of plan C to make sure that everyone's safe. The families stay in the car. They're all masked up. We feel they'll be safe, but uh, you know, we have to look out for our volunteers too. So we're in discussions about what a plan D looks like, but I will guarantee you Organized labor will get toys and food resources to every one of these 200 families that have been referred. We are organized labor. We can organize anything. 
we will make this happen. You know, my, my heart was breaking because uh, usually the party is up here in the Portland region. And I realized there's so many people who are hurting down in Southern Oregon with those wildfires. And I didn't know how to divide the party and get things down there with resources I had. And the next day I checked the mail and there was a very generous donation from McKenna Bishop Jaffe Law Firm that represents so many unions in the area. And I called John Bishop immediately and said, I got an idea. What if we turn this around to some holiday love and we ship it in a union convoy down to uh, Southern Oregon Central Labor Chapter? So I'm working with Misha down there and, of course, Amanda Sager. And Friday, a Teamster Semi is loaded up with a lot of toys. Spin Catering has made some beautiful treat boxes for 150 families down there. And the IBEW Federal Credit Union has also pitched in for parents' gifts and some coats and socks. So we're really proud to have this uh, convoy of love, toys coming from the Southwest Washington CLC, the Northwest Oregon CLC, all heading down to show some love to our wildfire impacted families down south at the Central Labor Chapter. So we can organize anything. And so you're saying we might have to go to a Plan D. What does that entail? So you've gone from a contactless drive through to what? What's the plan D? Well, we're not 100% sure we're going to do a plan D yet, but if we can't keep everyone 100% safe, obviously we will need to do what we need to do. Uh, plan D would be deliver 200 families toys to their porch with some food. I, I need to put in a shout out here. Spin Catering is making delicious holiday meals ready to heat, ready to cook, for every single one of these families. Spin Catering and Steve and Hariko have been a partner of Presents from Partners donating. They fed 800 people each year uh, for free. He donated that to labor to serve this community. But Plan D is delivering that food and those toys. I'm going to get an army of volunteer unionists and I'm going to load their vehicles up and give them a list of addresses and said, go be Santa Claus, drop this off on their porch. Let's get it out there. You keep saying referred. What mm -hmm. does that mean? How do union families take advantage of presence from partners? Yes, I work with all the unions and say, get us your families who are struggling right now. And they do. We're proud to say this is open to every union, anyone that gets a referral from their union. We have a lot of your classified up there in Vancouver that I've been working with who have been referred. If the union doesn't have a relationship with the Labor's Community Service Agency, I would love to have one. So uh, let's get that relationship going, and I will send you all the information for all of our safety net organizations. In fact, Helping Hands for the rent, utilities, food, those resources, that is also a referral process. And definitely reach out if your union has not had that relationship yet. I will tell them how to do it, and we'd be happy to serve. With the contactless drive through we hit a logistical capacity. And we are full with about 200 families, which equals 500 children. Oh, my goodness. So that's a lot of kids to pack up toys for. But we have stopped taking referrals, sadly, because we can't gather enough volunteers to do more than that. And uh, we start bagging up toys for 500 children. Shannon is volunteering all next week for the toy picking shift. Shannon, I expect all 500 done by Friday. If you don't mind, we're on a schedule. Chop, chop. Got it. I'm on it. <laughs> Now we know the labor conditions the elves really yes. work under. This head elf is pretty rough, but I'm proud to say that labor's community staff is represented by OPIU Local 11 office workers. So um, I do need to do a shout out to my staff, Jackie, Gabby, and Karen, the most amazing people that you know. They are so dedicated and I love them to death. And we couldn't be doing what we're doing without them doing all the work and me sitting here doing podcasts. So uh, I appreciate them. <laughs> So obviously, no matter which form Presence from Partners takes, you're probably going to need volunteers. You're definitely going to need people to contribute to keep Labor's Community Service Agency operating and able to offer this assistance. How do people get a hold of you so that they can help LCSA? Well, we will definitely need some help. We need some donations so uh, we can continue buying toys. If you go to our website, lcsaportland.org. So that's L for labor, C for community, S for service, A for agency, portland.org. It says Portland. I just, uh, I inherited that. <laughs> we serve all of Oregon and Southwest Washington. 
there's a donate button there. Please, please send us some love. We will get it to families. And if you want to volunteer, go to Facebook and look up Presents from Partners, Unions, Labor of Love. We have a Facebook page. Zip me a message. I'll sign you up as a delivery elf if we do, in fact, implement Plan D. Or if we decide to have the contactless drive through I still have some spots available for that. Hit us up over there and I will get back to you ASAP. Well, Aaron, I'm really glad you could take some time out of what is undoubtedly a busy schedule to talk to our listeners about what LCSA does and presence from partners. Thank you. I love the partnership with the Northwest Oregon Labor Council. We're so proud of that relationship. And of course, the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council is seriously a toy gathering machine. You guys have supported us with labor hours, making sure your unions know how to refer folks to LCSA. You guys are amazing. What's that website one more time? LCSAPortland.org for Labor's Community Service Agency. And if they want to reach out to volunteer or donate for Presence from Partners particularly, I think you mentioned the Facebook page. Well, to donate, go to lcsaportland.org. There's a donate button there. We'd love to have it. If you want to volunteer, just go to the Facebook page, Presence from Partners, Unions Labor of Love, or go to the LCSA Portland and just send me a message. I'll catch you and I'll reach out to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. And let's finish off with one more labor organization working hard to help working families here in our region, the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council. And we just happen to have the president of the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council here with us. Hello, everybody. Yeah, it's not often that you're a guest and not a co-host, but the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council actually has just started something to help out our community, right? Yes, we have. We have actually been hearing stories, and you may have been listening to some of them on our previous episodes, of some of our members who are facing layoffs, hours being cut, jobs being lost. And like we talked about in our last episode, our classified employees are struggling as well. So We as a council, which represents close to 15,000 union members and just about 50 different union locals, we decided that we were going to go ahead and start a relief food bank. It's going to be a weekly drive-through at our amazing Firefighters 452 Union Hall. We love our firefighters. And the firefighters have definitely put it out this year, if you'll excuse the expression. They have gone full out dealing with all these wildfires, and yet they're still opening up their hall to a community food bank, which is just amazing. And don't forget, they're on the front lines of fighting this COVID virus as well. So they have generously given us the location to have our drive through food bank, and we can't have anybody in the building, and that's why we're doing this drive through But how you get help in Southwest Washington from our food bank, talk to your union. This is a referral food bank, so you need to get referred from your union. We're going to do this from now, and we're planning to do it through the month of March. Our affiliates have already given us amazing contributions to get this food bank started for our union members that need help. So if you are needing help, contact your union. Ask them about the In Solidarity Food Bank from the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council and ask to be referred. Our members are not going hungry, not while we're here. So that's why we've decided to start this food bank. And we're trying to get the message out to those who really need help because it's here. When you're a part of the labor movement, you're not alone. We got your back. So Shannon, you've talked about how people in need can get referred to the food bank. What do the listeners do if they want to contribute to the food bank? Yeah, as far as donations, we're actually taking financial donations and we're also taking food donations. So if people would like to help, they can reach me at my email, which is president at swwaclc.org, or they can mail contributions and help to the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council directly at our P.O. Box 61929, Vancouver, Washington, 98684 and just flag that it's for our food bank and we'll make sure we get it in the right place. We can't do it alone. We need all the help we can get. And thank you to anybody who can help support this effort. And 
Thank you, working people, for joining us on another episode of Working to Live in Southwest Washington, produced by the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council. And remember, as always, this podcast was recorded under a SAG after a collective bargaining agreement for our Herald. And that makes for a happy holiday for all the SAG after members who are living in our region. Remember, working people, this is your show. We want to know what you want to hear on it. Email us at podcast at swwaclc.org or find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at swwaclc. And why don't you subscribe to the show? That way you'll get alerts every other week when a new episode comes on. And pass the link to your friends, your family, and even your crazy uncle that may live in eastern Washington. (laughs) Sorry, eastern Washington. And while you're at it, give us five stars or poke the teddy bear in the red nose or whatever your podcast platform of choice gives you to let people know that you'll like the stuff that we're doing. One last thing, folks, before we go, we've been talking a lot about how labor is helping out union members in this show. When you join a union, you don't just get better wages. You don't just get better working conditions. You don't just get a card and a t-shirt sometimes. You get people watching your back when times are tough. Presents from partners, the Carpenter's Toy Drive, ILWU's Powell's Affiliate Link. Those are examples of what that's all about. Working people standing together. So in the coming year, when people in your workplace are talking about maybe coming together and forming a union, don't just think about how it might benefit you today. Think about how it might benefit your family in the future when times get tough. And remember, everyone, Giving Tuesday is only one day out of the year. I think we can do better than that. So my challenge to all of you is to make sure that you're giving back every day, even a little bit. And if you're not giving, find a way. And if you need a place to volunteer, you can contact me and I'll put you to work as well. But Keep in mind, there are people out there who need help and need support. I know labor, we got our end covered. Make sure that you're helping out your community as well. And happy holidays. Stay safe. Be well. We'll see you soon. Bye.